it so long as like alchemy. Kevin Durant, Kevin Durant, KD. Well, it's official. The honeymoon is over. Um, it's been about two weeks since I've checked in with y'all anxiously waiting this NBA season. Um, a couple of you have reached out to me about like, hey, Alchemy, what's good with KD, right? He's all over the headlines. And there's been some other interesting little NBA tidbits that I want to um, touch on here as we're, you know, less than a month away from training camp. So obviously by now, everybody's heard the KD news. I don't need to go into detail. There's been several social media things that he's popped off about the fake handle. Um, and even before that, remember, you know, talking about nobody wanted to wear Under Armour shoes, man. So, you know, obviously the honeymoon's over, right? Uh, those of you that are not familiar with that phrase, meaning, you know, that period of that newness, right? Where everybody kind of has a mask on in a relationship where they just want, they want to be liked. And obviously KD wants to be liked. That's, that's clear, right? Um, so how, how do I feel about this? One, Obviously, he cares way too much about what other people think. So, you know, I equate that to social anxiety. You know, there's a direct correlation between a social anxiety and someone who is constantly searching for the approval of others and not the criticism, right? He, he doesn't take criticism well. One positive way you could look at this is he's kind of exercising his demons. I do want to give him credit for kind of owning up to this. We see so many so many athletes today kind of say, oh, you know, it was a fake account and he could have really easily shrugged this off. So he owned up to it. But is it really necessary? You know, at this point, again, you know, Alchemy, I'm going to spin this positively, especially being a Warriors fan. Do I like it? No, obviously. But there's going to be um, it, it, at this point, he's gotten so much glory. He, he comes to Golden State, he wins the championship, wins finals MVP, right? So at this point, what motivates Kevin Durant? You see him with his um, 35 something, his, he, he started a tech company, you know, under the, under the, you know, number 35 something, something, go check that out, Silicon Valley. One of the reasons he was willing to take the discount is because he's caking in the Bay Area. But anyway, you know, so what drives him on the court? One thing you could look at this is, this is this is the fuel, this is the millennial basketball player's fuel. We've all heard the classic stories of Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant after him and these guys, these great competitors that would kind of fabricate stories and find ways to create a chip on their shoulder to motivate them once they've already reached the pinnacle, right? And so maybe this is KD's way of kind of driving and motivating himself because he, the heckling and I think he's really become public enemy number one amongst NBA fans outside of Golden State, obviously. He's going to hear it heavy from the crowd, and he's going to get heckled all season long. And what effectively it's going to do is the way I see it is it's, he's going to become desensitized to it. It's the scrutiny, the opinions, the mocking. Eventually, he's going to shrug his shoulders and say, fuck it, I can't care. I can't care. So in that way, I think it may be a positive. I did not like the Steph thing with the with the shoes. I thought that that was, and I, I'll, I'm going to try and find the clip. I'll throw it on here where I think it was Rachel Nichols started to ask him about it. And it was almost like, like he was like, yeah, Steph had to talk with me. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I, I don't want to talk about that no more. Like Steph, Steph kind of cut that shit off. Like, look, bro, this is don't don't fuck with my money. I know we all we, we young billionaires, but it's money is money. Um, so I didn't like that. But like I said, he's going to become desensitized to the mocking and the clowning when he travels around the NBA, because he is public enemy number one, how is he going to use that fuel and that fire? My only concern would be is, is he going to walk into an arena and they're going to be booing and he's going to have these hecklers, right? And he's going to get so caught up in showing them he's the man and, and play, you know, angry KD mode, right? Which is fine. I like the way he plays when he's aggressive. Um, is he going to break out of the team concept to prove his point, you know what I'm saying? And and that would be my only concern as far as his basketball play goes. But, there, there, you know, this this was unneeded. It was unneeded. And I, I read a report today that, you know, Warriors management and teammates are baffled by Kevin Durant. Um, and, he, you know, it's almost like he is the, you know, like the new kid in school who was real quiet. No one could get him to say anything kind of shy. And then finally, once he broke out and started speaking, now the dude's got, he's got emotional diarrhea of the mouth. You know, he's talking about, oh, I, I regretted the decision right away. And this, this brutal honesty, I want to give him credit for because he's not doing what Kyrie was doing. We all saw Kyrie on first take and, you know, his, 
it was just phony. He he's just a phony cat, but I can't wait to see that the LeBron Kyrie funk is real, y'all. That's that's one thing. Not to jump subjects, but that's real, and I can't wait to see that unfold. But back to KD, I want to give him credit for being real. Is it too real? It's just kind of like close your mouth. So if he's gonna let these the opinions and the views and social media fuel him, that's fine. But ultimately, let's pay attention to the outcome. You know what I mean? He's got to focus his energy on the outcome. He can silently watch these credits without trying to clap back, if you will, and and the fake handle. So, you know, we'll see how that goes, man. We'll see how that goes. I don't, you know, it, it's added drama and all eyes will be on Katie. And like I said, I think he is uh, most hated right now. You know what I'm saying? So moving on into the season, we'll see. I just don't want him. I don't want that to break the team concept. And I'm sure Draymond Kerr, there's enough strong veteran leadership, the system in place to check him if that's the case. But when the season starts, please believe those Twitter fingers are going to quickly become trigger fingers. And all the scrutiny and all the hate, all those opinions are going to be alchemized into his fuel for the season. Uh, what else? There was a, you know, a little tidbit on, I don't know if you caught it, Andrew Bogut signed with the Los Angeles Lakers. And that's just simply a culture move, right? Remember, he, he fractured the left tibia um, like the day he signed with Cleveland last year towards the end of the season. I believe he played, I don't know if he played FIBA ball this year. I think he was recovering, but you know, reunited with Luke Walton in Los Angeles and he doesn't really fit schematically, you know, cause you look at Lonzo ball, uh, Coldwell Pope and these young Lakers, right? They look like they want to run and gun and get up the floor. He's not going to run. You're going to see a lot of possessions where Bogut just stays back on defense, right? He may make an outlet pass and just kind of hang back at half court. But what I say is it's a culture move is it's a toughness. It's the same reason Golden State brought him in in that Monte deal was, you know, to change the mindset. He's a vet. He's tough. And, you know, the, his, his mind is still sharp so he can still teach guys in practice. His value may be not even in NBA games, more so in practice, teaching the young guys where to be, how to be on the court defensively, his mind. And then he's still a great high post passer. So when the game does slow down in the half court, he will be effective in the high post with the passing. And then again, obviously protecting the rim, um, playing behind Brooke Lopez. So I like the move from the Lakers. It's a it's a low risk move. Right. And it's just bringing in a, another vet with all these young guys. So I'm happy for Bogues. I, and, and by the way, I'm going to be covering the Lakers this year, man. They're the the most interesting team in the league to me with Ingram Ball, Magic Johnson, Luke Walton. So I've decided that's going to be one of my second teams I covered. Um on Patreon, so I'll have deeper exclusive highlights of Laker games as well. Uh, what else? The other big headline this week is Carmelo Anthony's family, um, friends and family, expect to be traded to the Houston Rockets by Monday morning. Um, now, there's got to be a third team involved. The Knicks, I hope the Knicks haven't blinked first on this, and they're going to take Ryan Anderson's contract because... That would, I mean, would we all be surprised? Would we really be surprised? No, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm just kind of praying that they don't. The rumor is there'll be a third team involved. I've heard Portland's name thrown out there, Phoenix, Brooklyn. Um, so Houston, the, the way I see it is, okay, Daryl Morey, you're, he's a beast, man. He's a savage with what he does and the bold moves he makes. And I still think Melo has something left in the tank. And I think he'll be fine. What you're going to see Houston do is run that Spain pick and roll where, you know, there's a screen and then there's a down screen set on the screener and he pops out. So it'll be it'd be a mellow, hardened Chris Paul, Spain pick and roll schematically. That's that's very difficult to guard, man. Um, the question is, who do they give up? The I, I looked at their roster. Obviously, they have to dump Ryan Anderson's contract. Is Portland willing to take that? They just dumped Alan Crabb. Um, word is out of Portland. They desperately want to get rid of Myers Leonard's contract. I don't know if New York is willing to take him on. Um, a lot of potential, but potential, he's been in the league like four or five years. So it's, it's running out for Myers Leonard. Um, so when I look at Houston's roster, you get PJ Tucker, you got Luke Mamamute, right? And then you have Trevor Ariza all play the three, four, like mellow. So you got to think that Ariza is the chip that they're willing to move along with Ryan Anderson. And perhaps, I don't know if they have any draft picks left. My if if they end up having to cough up Eric Gordon in this deal, I don't like it as much, man, because then you're really hurting your depth. You know, you can you can afford to give up one of the small forwards for Mello. But if you give up Eric Gordon, that bench is looking real thin. You got Tarek Black and a bunch of really young players, P.J. Tucker, who, you know, 
is going to be finishing games most likely at the three four for them unless you know depending on him and Melo are interchangeable I think Tucker can play the four um, so it'll be a very interesting move. Remember, Rockets Warriors opening night. If they got a big three, if Melo's there along with CP3, man, it'll be interesting. Big personalities. It's a, it's a gutsy move. So, um, yeah, I think it'll happen. I do. I'm just curious to see the pieces they give up. How much depth is Houston going to sacrifice? Because it could just be, if they have no bench at all, we've seen it time and time again. Because if you look at I know James is in his prime, but CP3 and Melo are on the wrong side of their primes. Health and minutes played will be a concern moving down the stretch. And then you're going to, you're obviously got to get through one of the deepest teams of all time in the Warriors. Anyway, man, so like I said, there's what, uh, less than a month ready. I'm excited. I've been really playing in the background and working on some of my editing skills and just polishing my presentation because I'm excited this season to really just ball out, man. You know, it's going to be hoodie alchemy all year long. Hit that like, share, and subscribe. I'm out, y'all.